this video is going to show you a little bit about using the Respondus Lockdown Browser and how testing works in Blackboard. Um, if you need to download the Respondus Lockdown Browser to your personal computer, um, you can do that by going to the A-State website, go to Current Students, scroll down and over here under Quick Links under Software Downloads. You can either download the Respondus Lockdown Browser for a Mac or for a uh, Windows for a PC depending on which it is. So go ahead and click there and follow the download instructions. If you're going to be testing on one of the computers um, on campus, those already have the Respondus Lockdown Browser um, installed so you don't have to worry about it. Um, so once you have installed it, you will see either this icon if you have a Mac which is a globe with a padlock on it like mine is down here, or you will see this padlock if you have uh, Windows. Um, so the Respondus Lockdown Browser is basically a specialized browser that we use in online classes that adds for a little extra security. Um, but basically it functions the exact same way that, um, that Blackboard does once you've logged in. Um, so, uh, for instance, if you're ready to take the test um, and uh, you'll go to the Respondus Lockdown Browser and it'll ask you to choose a server. We want to choose Blackboard Learn since that's what we're doing click on continue. Now what it's going to do for the security reasons, if you're running any particular applications that um, that you're not allowed to, um, it's going to ask you to kill those applications before you log into the browser. However, if I do that I won't be able to record this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, log in via Firefox just to be able to show you how testing works, but you will use the Respondus Lockdown Browser. Um, so we're going to uh, go to Blackboard Learn and you log into our class um, and you'll navigate to whatever week the test is in. Um, for instance, so we'll go to Course Content and uh, for instance, Test 1 is in Week 4. So you go to Week 4 and you see here on the Table of Contents you've got the Week 4 Overview, which you should always start with, uh, the Test 1 Study Guide, and then when you're ready to take Test 1, you click on the Table of Contents and it brings it up. Click here to launch the test. And what it's going to do is when you're ready to begin, you click on begin. That's when the timer starts, so make sure that you're ready to start before you click on begin. And um, it's going to bring up the instructions. It gives you the name and description, the instructions for the test. For tests 1, 2, and 3, you have 75 minutes to complete the exam. For the final exam, you have 90 minutes. You have to take the test in one sitting. So for example, you can't start the test, log off, and then come back to it later. Um, the test is timed. You, um, like I said before, you've got 75 minutes. and What will happen is that um, the time elapsed will display in the status bar. You can see here it's, uh, it's showing that I've been online for 30 seconds or whatever it is. Um, and uh, it'll give you a one minute warning when it's almost time for an hour and 15 minutes to be up. If you go over time, it will let me know and I will see how, how far over time you went and assess any penalties accordingly. Um, you are only allowed to take each test once except for the introductory materials quiz, which you can take as many times as you want until you get a perfect score. Um, and uh, what happens is that there's going to be 50 questions um, that are pulled from a larger pool of questions. Um, so their questions will appear one at a time and you want to choose the best answer. Um, so what you want to do is you want to look at question one, read the question, answer um, however you want to answer, choose the best answer, and then you want to click on save answer. It's important that you do this because um, if for some reason the test gets, you get kicked out of the test or there's a technological problem, it'll show me how far you got, which is good. Once you've answered the question, you see over here there's a single arrow which goes to the next question or a double arrow which skips to the last question. I recommend that you go question by question. Um, so when you, uh, when you click on the next one, it'll bring up the next question. Um, you click on the answer, save answer. Once it's saved, you move to the next question, etc. I'm going to skip to the end just so I can sort of show you what ends up happening. Um, so when you skip, it'll skip to question 50, um, and I'm going to answer that one. And once it has saved my answer, then I click on save and submit. Now it's going to tell me that I haven't answered any of these questions. Um, so I'll, if, if you have skipped a question, it'll tell you and you can go back to it, but I'm just going to click on OK. Um, and it'll ask you to confirm the assessment submission. Click on OK. 
and it'll say test submitted. If there were any errors or any problems, it'll tell you that then. If you get any errors at that point, make sure that you contact me immediately, either by um, phone if it's before 9 o'clock at night or by email if it's between 9 p.m. and 8 a.m. So then you just come down here and click on OK. And um, what will happen is it'll give you the, a review of your test. So I only got a 6 out of 100. Hopefully you'll do better than that. It tells you what the time was that was elapsed. And it will also show you what the questions were. It'll tell you what, um, what answer you put and whether or not it was right or wrong. It's not going to tell you what the correct answer is, but if you got a question wrong, it'll tell you what you submitted and you can always go back and look up the answer yourself, which will help solidify the answer for you um, for the final exam, which is cumulative, etc. So once you've had a chance to take a look at your test, you just click on OK and you're all finished. And that's how testing works in Blackboard.